Well, g'day, curd nerds. Today we're making queso chihuahua. Now, not to be confused with the small dog of the same name, this cheese has its roots in the Mennonite culture um, that immigrated into the state of the same name, so the Chihuahua state in, uh, in North Mexico. I believe it's pronounced Chihuahua, so don't correct me if I'm wrong and don't flame me in the comments below. This cheese is very similar to cheddar. So it apparently is a pretty good eating cheese at about one month. But anyway, let's check out how I made queso chihuahua. So the ingredients are 10 litres of whole milk or full cream milk, an eighth of a teaspoon of mesophilic culture, half a teaspoon of calcium chloride that's been diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water, half a teaspoon of liquid rennet, I'm using IMCU 200 here, and that's diluted in a quarter of a cup of cool non-chlorinated water, two tablespoons of non-iodized salt. Now you can see there in the background that the uh, the milk I'm using is unhomogenized milk and it has a lot of um, thick cream that was like a plug um, and uh, so I had to whisk uh, that as best as I could into the milk. Now sometimes the milk, the, that, that hard cream sits on top of the milk and becomes cultured butter uh, through the cheese making process. Looks like bits of fat sitting on the top, but not to worry. So I'm going to heat the milk up now and uh, turn, the, turn the heat on and I'm going to get it up to a temperature of 32 degrees Celsius, which is 90 Fahrenheit. Just check, check, checking with my trusty thermopen. So now I'm going to sprinkle the starter culture over the top. There we go. So I'm just using a sachet of mesophilic culture from Mad Millie there. Uh, it tends to work quite well in these 10 litre um, batches of cheese. So we're going to allow that to rehydrate now for five minutes. Now I've turned the heat off, um, so it's not heating at all. Now I do find sometimes that I may have to uh, take the pot off the, the heat. It does get up, uh, elevates a little bit. Anyway, we uh, uncover that and we're going to add the added ingredients now. Give it a quick stir because a lot of the creams float to the top again. And you saw those fat globules on top, which was the hardened cream. So give that a good stir through. So we're stirring through the mesophilic culture now. Just making a good top to bottom stir just to make sure that's all distributed through the milk um, before we start the ripening phase. So I'm just going to check the temperature again. Now that I've stirred it through thoroughly, and it's risen up a little bit there, so so it's up to 32.9 Celsius. So I think I'm going to have to take the pot off the uh, the steam bath thing that I've got it sitting on. So that doesn't get too hot um, during the ripening period. So we're going to I'll cover it and allow it to ripen for 40 minutes at the target temperature of 32C and 90 Fahrenheit. So I'll just take that off the steamer there so that doesn't get too much hotter. So 40 minutes later, the acidity level has come up in the milk because the starter culture has changed some of the lactose in it into lactic acid, which is the perfect environment for the rennet to take um, action and set the milk. So it's come down a bit, little bit, so that's good. So it's 32.2, uh, which is perfect. I'm glad I took it off the steam. I put it back on the steam so it maintains its temperature now. Now we're going to add the calcium chloride solution. Just pour that in and then stir th 
through the milk. Now this calcium chloride helps the rennet to set pasteurized milk a lot better. So when in doubt, if uh, you think it's been pasteurized and you don't know what the temperature of the pasteurization was, it's best to add in some calcium chloride, even more so when you're using uh, homogenized milk. Uh, in this case, I'm not. As you can see, those uh, fat globules are getting a little bit harder there. Anyway, I'm adding the rennet to the milk now. So this is the diluted rennet that's been diluted in the non-chlorinated water. The reason we're using non-chlorinated water is because uh, it tends to stop the coagulation um, process during uh, uh, this next phase of the cheese making. So give that a good stir through no longer than a minute. So we're going to cover that and we're going to allow the milk to set now for 45 minutes at the target temperature of 32 degrees or 90 Fahrenheit. So just take that off now and hopefully it has set. I'm going to check for a clean break. So I'm just putting the knife in. looks a little bit sloppy. So it's not quite ready to cut the curd yet. So I'm just going to cover that up again. And we're going to wait another 10 to 15 minutes. So I'll just check it again. That I've waited that uh, 15 minute period. That looks a lot firmer, so that's good. So it's always best to check with a clean break before you cut the curds. So off we go, cutting with my um, curd cutter. That was kindly made to me by a uh, fellow Canadian cheesemaker. We're cutting the curds into 1.25 centimetre or half inch cubes. So I'm just doing all of the, uh, the vertical cuts there. The horizontal ones were done by the curd cutter. If you need to use, uh, if you haven't got a uh, horizontal curd cutter, then you just do it at a 45 degree angle, uh, both sides. Now we're going to allow the curds now to stand and heal for five minutes. So they kind of firm up a little bit and release a little bit of whey. But if we, and you can see a fair bit of whey there floating on the surface, which is good. And we just gently lift the curds and we make sure that they're all evenly cut. There's no bit of fluff in it like that was. So there are a few larger chunks there that I kind of missed, but uh, we're going to heat this up now. So we're going to cut any larger cubes as necessary, just with the side of the spoon. It's anything that looks unusually large. Anyway, we're going to stir for 40 minutes now, and we're slowly heating this up to 39 degrees Celsius, which is 102 Fahrenheit. So we do this very slowly. Um, you, know, you may need to adjust the heat, uh, turning on and off to get to the right temperature. Anyway, after the... Uh, the stirring period you can see I'm there now at uh, well 38.8 close enough to 39 and you see the curd size is uh, quite small now a lot of whey has been expelled uh, and this is kind of what we're trying to get to so I've turned the heat off there and that's absolutely perfect so we're gonna let those curds now settle to the bottom for 15 minutes just make it a little bit easier when we pour it off so over to the sink area after that uh, 15 minute wait we just tip the whey and we're going to uh, drain it through a cheesecloth lined colander now you can use this whey on your garden and all that sort of stuff um, I already had a fair bit of whey in the fridge that I hadn't used but anyway, we're going to try and pour through our hands there and make it into one consolidated curd mass because there's some very basic uh, cheddaring. So we just pour it into the cheesecloth, push as much uh, away as we can out with our hand. I only did this for about a minute. And then just pop it back into the pot. I found the best way was to move the cheesecloth and just kind of pull it out like that. We get one big slab. There we go and press it in the bottom of the pot to create a cake of curds. There we go. 
It's getting a little bit of dust and fluff. It always gets in your cheese. It's terrible stuff. Anyway, we're going to put that back on the stove and we'll stand uh, for 15 minutes to let a bit of whey expel. Okay, and you can see a fair bit of whey has come off there. This is the lovely Kim. Um, I'm out running an errand or something. I'm not sure what I was doing. She's turning over the curd mass for me in the pot. And we're going to let that stand for another 15 minutes. Just cover that up. And I'm back again. And I'm going to drain off a bit of the whey. And we're going to turn the curd mass over again. And we're going to allow that to rest for another 15 minutes. So this is very basic cheddaring. Very similar to the cheddaring process that they use in cheddar in England. And we just cover that up again. Okay, and now we're actually going to cut it into some slabs using the curd knife. So we're going to cut it into quarters. So four pieces. And we're going to pile them on top of each other to allow that little bit of pressure there to expel some more away from the curds. So there's four big slabs. Because it has uh, developed quite a firm texture, this uh, big cake of curds, just from those two waiting periods and draining the the curd out. Anyway, I'll pile it on top of each other. There we go. And we're going to cover that and let it rest for another 15 minutes. Okay, back over to the sink area. You'll notice a measuring tape in the background there. <laughs> we're going to move the curds to a, a, a chopping board over on the side there. I'm going to take the slabs out. place them on the board there we go so we're going to cut the curd into 2.5 by 1.25 centimeter fingers well that's one inch by one half inch there we go didn't actually touch the curd with my tape measure Anyway, there we go. We're going to cut in a little cube kind of thingies. And I decided to put them in the pot, back in the pot as we go along. This is known as uh, milling. Well, it will be in a minute. In factories, they have a big shredder machine and they put these slabs of curd through and it kind of cuts them up about the same size. Well, I know they do in cheddar anyway. There we go. So all the bits are back in the pot. And any big bits you can just break up with your fingers. Okay, we're going to salt it now. So we're going to put in our two tablespoons of cheese salt. So that's basically non-iodized salt because the iodine in the salt would kill off the um, bacteria, the lactic bacteria. Just gently mix that through with your hands. We don't want any whey coming out of the cubes at this stage. So we don't want to get too rough with it. We just want to make sure that the salt is evenly distributed through the cheese. Here we go, looking pretty good. So what I've done, I've lined my mould with the cheesecloth and I'm going to fill that up with the cubes of curd. So obviously my hands are clean through this entire process. You wouldn't believe how often I wash my hands with soap and water when I'm making cheese, um, I would say probably in, in one session more than 10 times. So every time I go away and touch something else, I come back, make sure I've washed my hands, hot soapy water, um, and give them a quick spritz with some vinegar to kill any moulds or yeast that may be lurking on my hands. 
Anyway, once that's all filled up, it's ready to press. So we take the, just tug the uh, cheesecloth there a little bit to make sure that there are no wrinkles or folds. There we go. So I'm just pulling a little bit tight around there. So put it over the top, put the follower on top, and then we're going to pop it into the cheese press at 10 kilos, which is fairly light, 22 pounds, for 30 minutes, just to help the cheese form a shape. The shape you're after, anyway. You can see there that the whey is running a little bit cloudy, which is an indication I'm probably pressing it a little bit too firmly there. It should kind of run a little bit clearer. But we all make mistakes. Okay, so we're going to remove it from the press now. There we go. I'll have a look what it looks like, whether it's formed up okay. And that's formed up fairly roughly. You can see the cubes there um, still. Uh, but that's okay. So we're going to rewrap that and pop it back in the press. Um, we're going to press this time quite heavily at 22 kilos or 50 pounds for at least 12 hours so that all of the cubes join together and form your cheese. If you pull it out at the 12 hour mark and they're not formed together, I would highly recommend that you press heavier, 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 <laughs> and uh, probably for another four or five hours, maybe even six, until you see all those lines closed up. So there it is, I've removed it from the press, it's now air drying. I'm going to air dry for about two days, I'm going to turn it twice daily until it's touch dry. Now touch dry just means it's like a clammy handshake. Now, I've cho chosen to vacuum pack, so here's my little vacuum pack machine. So I just seal one end first and then I pull out the amount of plastic I think it needs. Cut it off and get the queso chihuahua and pop it into the vacuum sealer there we go we're sealing it up there now you can wax this no problems at all um, but I wouldn't let it form a natural rind because tradi traditionally it's not done like that uh, so yeah you either wax it or uh, vacuum pack it so I'm just writing the name of the cheese on the plastic it's a good thing to do and when it's ready to taste test so I'm going to taste test that in uh, three months so we're going to ripen that at 10 to 13 degrees Celsius uh, for six weeks, and we're going to turn it twice weekly for even ripening. So you go. So I've got an eat by date of the 23rd of February in 2018. So as you can see, similarities to the cheddaring process, uh, although not the same, but uh, very uh, much uh, in comparison with cheddar. I'm going to put this into the cheese cave or cheese fridge, whatever you've got. Uh, now for uh, three months and my scheduled eating date is the 23rd of February 2018. Now you can eat this at uh, one month but I'm going to age it for three months for a slightly more mature cheese. Now you can age it up to a year um, to get that really sharp cheddary sort of taste. Also if you subscribe you'll get notified of each and every video as it gets published. You can also become a patron of the show uh, and all proceeds go into making a better show and more videos on a weekly basis. You can also pick up kits and supplies over at littlegreenworkshops.com.au. Thanks for watching Curd Nerds and I'll see you next time.